Do you remember when you first started to read your Bible? I sure do. I would do something a little bit like this. I would have my Bible closed and I would pray, God, show me a scripture that you want me to read today. And I would open my Bible and think, okay, great. This is what God wants to say to me. I'm going to read from Matthew 13. And I would do this each day and I would read a scripture, do something, even these ones where you'd go like that and read a scripture that my finger was pointing at, believing that that is what God wanted to say to me. That was how I studied my Bible. Now, let's be honest, this method of going through the Bible or reading the Bible isn't exactly a method at all. And you know what? It's not really effective and I didn't learn a whole lot because when I was doing this, I was most likely reading the scriptures completely out of context and reading them randomly. There was no consistency or synergy to what I was reading and studying. Maybe your Bible study is a little bit like this. Maybe you've done this before like I had. Maybe you have closed your Bible and pray that God would um, make something jump out at you. Or maybe you read short daily devotionals each morning and that is your Bible study or the way you get the word into your life. I love daily devotionals and going through them. I think they're a great way to receive something each morning, but I think that we all need a little bit more than that. I think that we need to consume the gospel, not just through someone else's experience, but through our own experience of it and our own understanding of it and come to understand for ourselves what it means for us instead of reading a devotional or a book or something where someone else is relaying stories to us. That stuff's great, but I really think we need to go deeper in our own walk and our own understanding of the Bible. But reading the Bible can be hard, am I right? Sometimes it's like, oh, it's this, is, this book is so big, there is too many books inside the book, and where do I even begin? What do I read and what's gonna be relevant for me to Today. Anyway, this book's old. Um, what, what does God want to say to me and how do I read it? Do you read a book? Do you read a chapter? Do you read a few passages of scripture or one scripture or one verse? And how on earth do you grow in your understanding of it so that you can actually deepen in your relationship with God? Over time, I found an effective method of studying the Bible that is actually more of a method as opposed to complete random studying of the Bible. And this way of studying the Bible has changed the way I study it. It helps me be more focused. It helps me to learn more. I have learned so much more studying like this than I ever have. And it actually helps me to grow in my relationship with God. So I'm going to share four simple tips that I've learned to help you with your effective Bible study. Now, the first one is to actually choose a book to study. First, what I want you to do is to research the Bible. I want you to have a look at what the different books are, who authored the books, um, where they are in history. You might want to start from the very beginning, from Genesis, from when the world began and when God breathed life into man. Or you might want to start from the beginning of the New Testament where we meet Jesus and learn the story of Jesus and how we are each redeemed through him. Or maybe you want to study a book that goes through the story and journey of a particular person like Esther and to look at their relationship with God and what, what her obedience to God meant. If you're really stuck with a place to start, I really recommend familiarizing yourself with the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I recommend starting with the book of John. It's a great place to start because it actually focuses on who Jesus is, also what he did on earth, but more on the character of Jesus and who he is. So if you want a guided study, I've actually created a free 21 day Bible reading study to guide you through the book of John. And I'll include that uh, below this video. After you've chosen a book to study, I recommend you start by reading a chapter a day. When it comes to studying the Bible, of course, you don't need to overwhelm yourself by reading the entire book. Sometimes less is so much more. It's not a race to the last page. You know, so often I think we can go, I want to get through the beginning of the Bible to the very end in a few months, or I want to go from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible in a year. That's awesome, but I want to make sure that you're not overwhelmed. I want to make sure you actually learn something instead of just reading because you have to um, and because you have to tick off a box. I want you to read because you want to understand Jesus and who he is and understand God and what God's plan is for your life. So don't overwhelm yourself by biting off more than you can chew. While I recommend starting with a chapter a day, if that's too much for you and you feel like there's just far too much information there, break it down. Often um, each chapter in a lot of Bibles, they'll include little titles, subtitles throughout the chapter. If you have a look here, you can see here, there's a subtitle 
and another subtitle and subtitles throughout that break down the chapter. I'm looking at Matthew 13 and we've got the parable of the sower and then at verse uh, 10 we've got why Jesus used parables and at verse 18 the parable of the sower explained. So you can so easily break down a chapter into smaller chunks by those subtitles and if you find that even that is too much that's completely okay. Start by reading a few verses of scripture each day. I encourage you to start somewhere because as you start even with something small and you reflect on that and spend time studying it then each day as you keep on doing that it will become more of a habit and you'll be able to take in more strips more scripture as you go thirdly i want you to make notes and write out your thoughts this is the journal that i have been using this year it's just a simple 365 day journal and what i do as i study the bible and as i read through scripture is i make notes you can make notes in your Bible. A lot of Bibles now have um, a journaling Bibles and they have a column like this one does here. My Bible here it has a column where you can write out your thoughts and reflections on scripture as you go through the Bible. I think that's fantastic. But I also think it's really good to have a little bit more space to write out more thoughts and to write out prayer and to write out notes um, as you go along. So in my journal, I don't know if you can see here, but I have got so many different um, reflections that I've made and I, d I usually date them each day so I can see what I've read and what date I've read it at. But I write anything and everything from um, reflections on the scripture to prayers to just journaling my thoughts and, and my gratitude and my thanks to God. So here I was studying Romans 1 and I've made my notes. I've written like the sub, I write out, I like to write out the subtitles that are actually in the scripture so I can go, okay, Paul longs to visit Rome. This is what happens here. And I write out my thoughts and it's really just a place for me to, to, to write it out and to make notes and to dot point things so that I remember it and I commit it to memory. Um, I'm sure you've heard if you've studied or spent time at university or college or even in school that you learn that when you write things down, then you commit them to memory better. So I think it's awesome and a good practice to start by writing things down. And you can also go back to that. Say in a month's time, you can go back to what, are, what was I reading in Acts? What was I reading in Romans? And you can see what you've already learned and build on that in the future. The fourth part of studying the Bible is my very favorite part. This is the SOAP method. This is um, world-renowned. Lots of different people use this method, and I find that it's really helpful to keep you on track as you're going through your passage or your chapter of Scripture. So here's how it works. Each of the uh, letters for SOAP actually stand for something. So S is Scripture, O is an observation, A is application, and P is prayer. So you section this out in your notebook or in your journal and you start by S. You start with S. Where I've started here, I was studying Acts and I've started um, by writing down S, which stands for scripture. And there I write out the scripture. I write out the scripture Acts 1 and I write down the O. That's really simple. So after I've read through the scripture, this is just my observations. I'll read, I'll read the passage in my Bible and then I'll write down my immediate observation. So here I've written, after Jesus came back to life, he appeared to the apostles over 40 days to speak about the kingdom of God. He told them to wait for the gift God promised. Um, Jesus said, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Um, uh, Jesus is taken up to heaven. I say, Matthias was chosen to replace Judas who had died in a field. Um, that he had bought with the money he received for, uh, for telling where Jesus was. So O is just my observations on that chapter or that passage. So I've read through it and then I'm sort of summarizing it or observing some things that, that I've read. Then we go to A. I'm not sure if you can see that there, but I've written out A and this is application. So this is where I have written down uh, my application. So how does this scripture actually apply to my life? So this is where you can write, you've read the scripture, you have written down what it is, you have made an observation of what, what you can see and understand from there. And then A is, how does this scripture actually apply to my life? What happened here 2000 years ago? How does that apply to me today? And here, what I've written, this whole passage was about the Holy Spirit. And I write, as believers, as a believer, I have the Holy Spirit. That gives me power to be a witness for Christ unto the ends of the earth. What does this look like? So this is really practical. I'm just writing out thoughts as I go along. I say, what does this look like? It looks like telling people about Jesus. It looks like having having open and authentic conversations. It looks like doing She Is Light in the ministry that I believe God has called me to do. It looks like following the Holy Spirit's promptings. So these are notes that I have made under the A section for application of how this scripture and this passage in Acts 1 can actually apply to my life today. So that's what the A is all about. 
And then we have P, which is pretty self-explanatory. It is a prayer. Here, I have written out my prayer in the um, in my notebook. I've actually written it out. It's not just something that I'm like, okay, now I'm going to pray. And of course, sometimes I'll just pray. I don't I don't always need to um to to write out exactly what I pray, but I always write something out in the prayer section, even if, even if I am verbally praying to God. I like writing it out because I can look back and see what I have prayed. Um, so here I've written in my prayer, God, thank you that I am a witness to Christ. Help me to be the best witness you can make me be. I want my life to shine Jesus wherever I go. Whatever that looks like, help me to shine Jesus in kind words, in gracious heart, in forgiveness, in generosity. Create in me a clean heart and pure spirit. So that is just a prayer, a personal prayer that I have written um, after reading through that scripture and reflecting on it and observing and applying it to my life. That is a personal prayer that I have written to God. So that's the SOAP method. I want you to use that in your daily Bible study. It'll help you to actually stay on track and to know what to do. So when you're reading scripture, you can actually go, okay, this is what I can do right now instead of reading it and maybe you're not understanding it. This actually prompts you to reflect and take action. So I encourage you to do that each and every single day. And I really look forward to hearing about how this method helps you deepen your relationship with God and go deeper in your Bible study. I will include some notes on this method so you can understand how it works and remember what to do and what to say below this video. So make sure you check that out too.